All right, my name is John Garfield. This is the Releasing Kings newsletter. It is uh, February 2nd, 2014, and this Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday in the United States, so uh, I want to let you know that uh, I'm rooting for the Seahawks. My wife is a huge fan, and uh, so we'll be watching the game in a few hours here. I want to talk to you today about having a teachable or a coachable spirit. Becoming a king in the sense of fulfilling your destiny and living at a level of abundance that allows you to bless others is not an accident. There is a connection between wisdom, the wisdom of Proverbs, uh, wealth, and kingdom ministry, and a teachable spirit. Okay, Those things naturally go together. The good news is that anybody can be teachable or coachable. It's a choice. Listen to Proverbs 9, verse 9. Instruct a wise man, and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man, and he will add to his learning. Proverbs 1, verse 5 says, Listen... Let the, li let the wise listen and add to their learning. Let the discerning get guidance. So the Bible puts a premium on wisdom and being uh, teachable and, uh, and learning, quite frankly. Um, some are very open to new ideas or wisdom and actively solicit those things from other people. Others politely avoid these conversations and keep their goal, goals anonymous. <laughs> there are three categories of being teachable, and uh, I think we've all been in, you know, some of them at least. Um, the first one is poor. And these are not financial uh, categories. They're, they're really uh, different categories of attitude. So the poor spirit says, uh, I'm not particularly successful and I need a miracle to get there. I would take help from anyone who could guide me to change my situation. So seemingly very open. The one note I want to make about this category is that the, this particular attitude is susceptible to fraud because they are willing to surrender their decision making to another in the name of submission or in the name of success. Okay, Teachable is not gullible. And there are people that uh, are willing to take advantage of us out there. I found out about that the hard way myself. Um, the second category is the sort of the middle class or modest or mediocre. Uh, and it says, I've been successful in increments because of my hard work and diligence. If I continue to improve a, a, and work harder, I may grow another increment or another few percent. In any case, I'm not interested in trying something new and losing what I've worked so hard to get. No thanks for your suggestions. I am not coachable or teachable. <laughs> and the last category is successful. And it sounds like this. I've been successful way beyond my expectations or what I deserve. I'm surrounded by good people who have made my success possible. If you have a great idea, I would love to hear it. That's how I've been blessed. Good ideas from good people. So, these categories are not financial, they are hard attitudes that can influence our fruitfulness. The practical and spiritual dynamic is that growth is a combination of work and diligence for incremental progress, but it's coupled with occasional breakthroughs that come from outside our skills and abilities. Having a teachable spirit opens the door to quantum leaps from two sources. One, God can intervene in a miraculous way. And number two, a new person can be added to our team who brings a key that we didn't have before. An idea, a skill, or a connection. Here's the bigger, biggest secret of growth. Number one, God brings number two, people. In other words, God often sends a miraculous answer by showing us another person with an ingredient that we need. If we don't have a teachable spirit, the bus and our step change leave the station without us and we remain in our spirit of poverty. We don't see the person who can show us a life-altering course correction. So I want to suggest to you that being teachable is important. Let's talk about humility. Those in the greatest danger of missing this quantum leap are, mo leap, <laughs> are modestly successful and overly dependent on themselves. Their own way of doing things, their own hard work, their own control issues, and their own insecurities. We often see poverty and humility as connected. They're absolutely not connected. In fact, successful people are typically more humble because they're willing to get the help that they need from God and other people, and that's the way they conduct their business and their lives. They carry no illusions about their own self-sufficiency. So, what does teachable look like? A teachable spirit is as simple as having a written plan and allowing someone else to see it. Amazingly, 
Very few people have either one of these ingredients. If others know what you want to accomplish, they will help you realize your dream. That quality of transparent vulnerability draws wisdom toward us. Being unteachable is a heart belief that no one will help you. Uh, the world is full of people who are willing to help you become, uh, fulfill your destiny and cause your dream to come true. Um, so I want to suggest that uh, if we're going to be teachable, there are four ingredients to that. Number one is plans and goals. The first ingredient is that you yourself know where you want to go. These goals have to be consistent with the desires of your own heart and God's heart, or you end up disconnected from who you are and from the kingdom, who God is. We use a heart plan to connect people with themselves and what Jesus wrote on your heart. And that's been so effective. I've, I've been so blessed to see people really understand uh, the nature of their calling. The second area, after uh, you understand where you want to go, your own goals, is allowing other people to help you. The second ingredient is that we allow others to see the deepest desires and plans of our heart. People are often present in our lives who can help us if they just know what we want to do. They just need to be allowed to do so. That's that transparent vulnerability characteristic. I know it's a little bit difficult to be that open, but that's the secret. Okay. And the, the third category is being willing to seek help. People with a teachable spirit don't wait for someone to show up at their door to save the day. They are continually dreaming, reading, meeting new people, going to training events, networking, and formalizing, which sometimes means paying for mentors and mastermind groups. In other words, they invest in themselves and in their dream. They think it's that important and it's that real. They just never stop learning and asking for help. They believe in themselves and they believe in their cause and their calling. And they believe in angels, the people and the supernatural help that comes from God. Okay, And the lastly is that uh, these people that are teachable give help. They are teachers themselves. When you experience a breakthrough with the fingerprints of God and other people on it, there is a natural motivation to show others how easy it is. It's, that's a very fun and healthy attitude. The Father is releasing himself in fathers right now in the kingdom. Be one. Be a father. Help someone else. These attributes are really heart beliefs of a king. Someone who has an assignment from God and a vision to fulfill his or her destiny. There's a huge networking ingredient in the kingdom right now. A huge fathering ingredient as well. Listen to Proverbs 25 verse 2. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, to search out a matter, is the glory of kings. In other words, this mindset of, uh, of uh, being fruitful, being a king, being prosperous, uh, fulfilling your destiny is all about initiative. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but to search out a matter is the glory of kings. That's the kind of people God is looking for. So God's plan for you and hopefully your plan for yourself should have a place for exponential growth. Please hear this. Uh, you should have a place for growth, for viral ideas, for quantum leaps. God wants to move you to a new level. And that's the very nature of the kingdom. It increases. We make room in our hearts to take these steps by getting out of the old and having a teachable spirit for something brand new that we have never ex never seen before. Expect it. Plan for it. Seek it with all your heart. Uh, be diligent. You know, be consistent. Uh, take incremental steps. Be, be faithful. But expect God to intervene and watch for those things. Watch for those people that can help you make a dramatic increase because that's how the kingdom works. Okay. Listen to Genesis 26, verse 12 to 14. Isaac planted crops in that land and in the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. Now, increase a hundredfold. That's 10,000% in one year. Now, you might think it's, you know, it says uh, because the Lord blessed him. When that sounds like a miraculous intervention, I want to suggest that he dug wells and watered land and grew crops to get that thousandfold increase. 
Yes, God showed it to him through his father, Abraham. But, uh, and it was, you know, God helped him, God prospered him, that's true. But there was a practical ingredient too. He, he did work for it, okay? He did have an idea that he implemented, and it did work. But the message is, through that work and that revelation, he increased 10,000% in one year. You can too. <laughs> God bless. Get a hold of this message and build a kingdom. Find your spot in the mountain of, uh, of your calling and have the impact that God has called you to. Amen? Have a great week. Go Seahawks. <laughs>